everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. I'm Jeff Antoniak. So today I want to talk about how to end your solos. This seems like it would be simple, doesn't it? And of course, this is for all instruments, right? Um, yeah, you would think that you just kind of stop playing and then your solo's done. Yeah, that's not how it works. That's not how my favorite movie ended. They ran out of film, so they just kind of stopped. No, that's not how it works. And uh, whether it's through Jazz Wire or Towson University, where I used to teach or wherever, I've auditioned thousands of people by now to get into various places. And ending a solo is something that I don't hear done particularly well. There's a reason for that. We don't do it. We don't practice it. So when we're practicing, we've got our play along, our iReal Pro, whatever we're playing with. And how do we end the solo? Typically, one of three things happens. We run out of the play along, the phone rings, or we get hungry and go get a bite to eat. We just stop, right? So here's a big deal that I want to work on. It's been coming up at Jazz Wire, which, by the way, I would love to work with you there. Sign up for a tour. Sign up for a tour, and I can show you around Jazz Wire a little bit. Okay, so let's dig into this. Um, so there, there's sort of two things going on. Now, when we're playing live, um, a really big deal is what's going on with uh, body language. And I tell you what, if you're watching this more or less in real time, if you're watching this on uh, Friday when this came out, I have a streaming gig tonight. Tune into the streaming gig, it's five bucks. It's me and my professional band. You're gonna see this in action. Now, one of the ways, how do, how do I let people know I'm ending my solo? So one of the big things is when I'm ending a solo, I might take half a step back. I'm not aggressively moving forward, I'm moving back. I'm receding into the band, physically. But of course, that's what my solo is doing. I was the foreground, now I'm receding back into the band. I may look over my shoulder and just say, hey guys, who's next? Here's the thing, I don't look at a particular person and say, hey Bob, you're next. Because that's not my job. As I was soloing, the band should have been figuring out who's soloing next. So it's not my job to cue the next person, but to give a cue I'm wrapping up. So watch um, when you tune into the uh, streaming gig, watch for those uh, nonverbal eye contact kind of things we'll do. Now, there will be some social distancing because of the COVID thing, so, but we'll still be able to see each other. That's, that's an important part. So what I want to work on today is the melodic aspect. And I don't care if you're a drummer, I don't care if you're a singer scatting a solo or a sax player playing a solo, you're playing a melody. Your solo is a melody. So the biggest thing to know is the more you know about melodies, the better you'll be at ending your melody. Makes sense. The more you understand the logic of melodies, the more logical your melody will be. So this is just going to be a big lecture about how melodies work, essentially. So that's kind of how we're going to go with this. So um, one big thing we can do, and uh, I do this some, and so do many of your pros, you could quote the melody we're playing at the end of your solo. So you go from being more creative to sort of reining it in a little bit. Quote the melody. What a great thing to do. Here's the thing. You've been soloing for three or four or five choruses. Do you even remember the melody? Do you remember what note the melody starts on? So again, you have to really know the song you're playing to be able to jump in the middle of the fifth or sixth or seventh measure of the last A section and quote the melody. So um, I have an example for you on the PDF. It's always free. I'd love to send it off to you. Um, the example we have today, I'm going to use uh, Lullaby of Birdland, one of the songs that the Red community is working on at Jazz Wire. And um, let me do this. Let me just start improvising as if I'm in the last A section. And I'm going to come in pretty strong because I'm, you know, towards the end of my solo. I'm going to bring it down and then I'm going to quote this melody to end the song. See if this sounds natural. See if this makes sense. It's a great tool. <laughs> All right, so you heard it. Coming out of that solo, I tried to start pretty big, and then I jumped into quoting the melody, a really musically mature, pretty cool thing to do. And it, of course, had the effect 
of wrapping up the solo. Now, um, and there's a couple things on the PDF here that I talk about that are important to bring up at this point. One big thing is most great melodies have either a long note as the last two measures or space. If I want you to say something next, if I want to let you know I'm done talking, I actually have to stop talking, right? So um, that is built into this melody. So when I quote this very cool melody, I bring with it all the great elements of its shape. So there's a long note, two from the end, and then ba doo da then a punchy ending is kind of cool. So we get a long note, a sort of fanfare ending, and then silence. Wow, like what could be clearer that I am done? So this first approach is we'll use the tried and true melody and you can sort of take all of the wonderful elements that it has and claim them as your own, which is what I did there. Cool. Well, I tell you what, before we go on to the next thing, I've got sort of a list of things I want to go over with you. Uh, before we go on to that, I want to remind you I have four Digging Deeper online workshops coming up. They start next week on Thursday, September 17th. The first one is on funk and rock playing. Now, these are workshops where we're literally working together in real time. You, me, and 14 other people. A maximum of 15, sometimes it's only 10 of us. And literally working together, talking, answering questions. I'm hearing you play, you're hearing me play, and we work through this stuff. So we have four of these coming up. One is on advanced rhythm changes, all this stuff you can see up here, uh, tritone substitutes. They are $35 each, so you can attend one. Many people attend all four for 120 bucks. So uh, sign up, More about three quarters of the spots are gone. We do have a spot left in each one. So uh, just sign up. I would love to get to work with you in a more personal way than this. All right, so look at the sheet here and look at a couple other ideas we have. Something that I do quite a bit, I think myself, is as I'm playing, I'm trying to let people know I'm, you know, I'm wrapping down, I'm bringing the energy down. And by the way, my hand keeps doing this. I don't even know who's controlling this thing, but it's doing what I say I want to do, down, right? So I want to give everyone a sense down, I'm bringing it down. So it could be energy-wise. Well, what does it mean to bring the energy down? Is a C more energetic than a C-sharp? What am I talking about? Well, volume. As I bring my volume down, it sounds like I'm ready for a transition. How about the number of notes I'm playing? Maybe we could call that the texture. As I play less and fewer notes and leave more space, it dissipates the energy, right? Perhaps if I play something motivic that sort of winds its way down a little bit. There's all these ways, musical ways, that I can achieve this sort of emotional thing I'm talking about, winding it down. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do here. We all understand we want to end our solo, but we need tangible tools. That's what I do here at Digging Deeper Jazz, is try to give you tangible tools every week, right? So let me do this. I'm going to play for you an example on the PDF and what I did is wrote out a last A section so you could sort of see what I'm talking about. So in here, you'll see some motivic ideas, a little idea that I repeat, but as I repeat it, it comes down in range. It starts thinning out in rhythm. There are fewer notes as we go along. There's a little bit more space. As I play softer on all these instruments, when you play softer, your timbre changes. When I whisper, my voice sounds different, right? So there will be a number of elements in here that should make it sound like I'm winding down. Check it out. All right. So all those items that I listed on the PDF were built in there. And so it had this sense that I was ending. It, I did, it wasn't the sense that the phone rang and I have to stop, take the saxophone out of my mouth now. That's not it. And when you check me out at the concert on Friday night, you're going to notice that as I was doing that, I would have been doing some things physically to signal to my bandmates like, yeah, Jeff's wrapping it up. There's no question. Even if they weren't watching musically, they would be able to tell. But I want to make it abundantly clear. And I know I appreciate it when my band members do the same thing, when they play something musically that makes sense, and then when they give me a real-world signal. Yeah, 
I'm, I'm not having to guess. This is a big deal. So I really appreciate you uh, checking this out. Um, I do want to remind you, should have told you earlier, there's a webinar coming up next week. So there's all kinds of stuff coming up. Gig this Friday night, webinar next Wednesday. If you go to the show notes, it'll list the link and uh, just register to attend the webinar. We have 100 spots and about eight or 10,000 of you are going to see this video this week. So <laughs> jump on it. It's free. It's an opportunity for you to chat in with any questions you have about any of the uh, Digging Deeper videos, about Jazzwire, about anything else we're doing, the workshops coming up. So I hope I will see you at the webinar and um, have a great time with this. And just being conscious about ending a solo is probably the biggest thing. You've got some tools here. Have a great time with it. Thank you.